Good job. Good job. How many people on the is that right or left? It's my right. Let's have a pack of cheese and a new sweet food, you got it. Well, I guess the first announcement is you're wondering why I'm up here again, and that is because Pastor Harold is um, taken to the bed. You know, if all else fails, take to the bed. So, anyway, I, we want to pray for him to be much, much better and be able to come on back where he belongs. We won't say anything about setting that example, will we? <coughs> I don't know. Lisa, pray for me. I gotta get a grip. I gotta get a grip here. All right. Today, here are the announcements. You probably saw them up there. But here's just a, a couple. Um, today, the session will meet at 3 p.m. The kids' choir will meet at 3:30, right in here. All right. Next Sunday is the Christmas program at 5 p.m. At, it's going to feature Brandon Rower. Isn't that going to be great? Brand new world. Yeah. And the Flitty Pies of Cedar Creek and the Combined Choirs. It's going to be wonderful and there's a potluck that follows it. All right. This Wednesday, the Bible study will meet. All right. And Spiritfield Fellowship meets tonight. What's on the menu tonight, Laura? Tacos. Yes. All right. That sounds good. Makes everybody happy. All right, and Laura's providing food for us tonight. Okay, tomorrow night is the Snack and Yak Ornament Exchange at Laura's house. If you don't know how to get to her house, how many people don't know how to get to Laura's house? That's good. Okay, Warren, you can ride with BJ. That's good. <laughs> oh, she doesn't know either? I'm really good at explaining how to get to Laura's house. Oh, okay. All right. Because my grandma well, like get the directions. There's, there's two people here that know really well how to tell you to go, and that's Laura and TJ. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we've got on here. Oh, please just notice the December schedule, because there's a lot of things there. I think maybe I've covered most of the announcements. This week, Winter and Company is having their recital. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It's going to be this Tuesday at the Capitol Theater. And the curtain time is 6 p.m. And that is going to be so fun. So hope, hope we can support Jamie and Beth and anybody else. Olivia. Yeah, and, and all of our dancing. Kingsley. Yes, anybody else dancing? This Marcus. Week? Yes, Marcus. Yes. Now I know they're going to be wonderful. Nancy has the shirts. If you have not gotten your shirt, Nancy, if you want to say something about that. Well, I wore my shirt today, so everybody can see it. I've got a large because I wear stuff underneath. Um, I've got a great shirt down to your and the top of the mountain looks like the fire. And on the back, it's got Joshua 1 9 about being courageous and strong. Okay, this is her last order. She's going to do an order today. All right. And the long sleeves are 15, the short sleeves are 12, and the proceeds go to the Dollywood Foundation. All right, and we have a thank you note here. It is from um, our school, Nola Chucky School. It says, Special people make special schools. To Cedar Creek Presbyterian, thank you so much for the generous donation for our library. We are purchasing upper grade, high interest books. Our middle school kids will benefit tremendously. And it says thank you, and that is from their school principal, Amy Brooks. Okay, are there any other announcements? Anything else that I have forgotten? Barbie and the store. The Cedar Creek store will be open briefly after church. Yes. 
lots of wonderful things. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to be open? <coughs> Welcome everyone again to worship. Wait a second. One more announcement. Thank you, Craig. Oh yeah, I've got to brag on my daughter, Caitlin. She's the educator of the week. Uh, she's, uh, she did an interview. She's going to be on channel at noon. Tuesday evening. I think it's seven or seven thirty. So we're going to be ready for the share interview and her kids and her class. Oh, wonderful. We thank you for answering the call of your Heavenly Father to get up, come to church today, join with your family here at Cedar Creek Presbyterian. <coughs> we thank you for coming and realizing that you are indescribably precious to your Heavenly Father. Every single one of us are like his favorite child. There's nobody like you. And here we are gathered to worship him, the one true and living God, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you the honor and the glory this day. Thank you, Lord, for calling us by name. Thank you, Lord, for being everything to us, for giving us life and breath. We thank you, Lord, that you share your glory with us that you live inside of us and that you give us a job that no one else can do. And so here we are. We present ourselves to you to worship you now. <clears throat> Invade our space, dear us, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we'll have the writing of the Advent brief by Sam and Devin and Marcus. The reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 4, 40. Are you leaving me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together <coughs> will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Now we will have the choral introit. After the introit, please stand for hymn number 179, the first Noah. i 
you sing these glorious Christmas carols. How inspired these writers must have been. How closely they must have walked with the Lord to write these songs. It's truly a gift for the ages. Now as we come into the presence of a holy God, gathered together as his people, we are reminded that none of us are perfect. That all of us come in glory. All of us as prodigals. All of us as strays. And he gathers us together. And he fixes us. We're like that jigsaw puzzle. And all of a sudden, you stub your toe, and the whole thing falls on the floor. But he puts us back together. Then he starts over. So let's take a moment to confess to the Lord the ways that we have fallen short this week and receive his glorious forgiveness. Let's pray. Believe the new, the good news of the gospel. <clears throat> Jesus Christ has forgiven you. He has washed your slate clean. And you stand in his presence, the redeemed of the Lord.
was a manger that dear little stranger Jesus the wonderful Savior was born in there was none to receive him none to believe him none but the angels were watching
But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zacharias' division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by law, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When, when Zacharias saw him, he, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. You are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zachariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you do not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant, and for five months remained in seclusion, the Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. May the Lord bless to us the reading and hearing of his holy word. Sermon hymn this morning, number 19, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
40th chapter of Psalms, verses 1 through 5. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord, the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, O oh Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. No one can recount to you. Were I to speak and tell of them, they would be too many to declare. that was preaching at a church nearby and they went too long and somebody in the congregation just stood up and said, Preacher, I believe that's enough for out of you today. <laughs> Sit down. Well, so he did. And the whole congregation the next week wondered why he submitted his resignation. I couldn't believe that. Could you believe that? I mean, that makes me so happy that I'm here at Cedar Creek. So let me say these people on the front row. Well, they're my friends and neighbors. I don't think they're going to tell me to sit down and shut up. Are you? Preach on. Preach on. <gasps> my best friend. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I just want to kind of give a disclaimer about this sermon today because last night I said to Harold, just in case, do you think you could print off your sermon for me? <laughs> so he did. He gave me a copy of his sermon. When I read it, I thought, oh, he must have been worried about somebody telling him to sit down and quit preaching. Anyway, I asked the Lord to help me with it. Have you ever had any any really, really strong desire for something. Something that you just couldn't wait for. Now there you are, sitting like a bunch of Presbyterians, as if that never happened to you. The choir is just exactly the same. I'm going to put the fire under them here in a second. Paul. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had anything you just couldn't wait for? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we have an honest person here. <laughs> All right, so let's just take a vote on it. Has anybody ever, ever had something they just couldn't wait for? All right, there we go. That's more like it. It's more like it. Our neighbors down front not raising their hands. I want everybody to know that. They always had all of their wants and desires met exactly in the beginning. Right, Skip? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, anyway, Harold starts his sermon by saying, have you ever seen that commercial where that little boy comes running into the kitchen and says, is it soup yet? Yeah. You ever seen that? Is it soup yet? Yeah. <coughs> no, no, no. Chili. It's chili. Yeah. Well, I've seen a different one then. I've seen one for Campbell's. How have you seen it? Chili. Chili. He went down chili. And I, I can get straightened out because I never saw that. So I stand there. <laughs> well, a lot of us are like that young boy. When we strongly desire something, we're anxious to see it come about. You know, I have some personal desires at my age. Now, when I was younger, I had, a, I had a conflicting kind of thing. I, I would pray for Jesus to come back. And Jesus, oh, please come back, please come back, come, come back, but, but wait till I've gotten married. And, and then it changed, and it was, oh, oh, Jesus, please, please come back, but wait till I have children. <laughs> yeah. But at this stage in life, I have some different kind of things that are very strong personal desires. 
And one of them is that my strong desire is that everyone in here comes to know how much God loves you. To be so assured that you know that nothing is impossible because God loves you so much. Another one of my very strong desires is for each person in here to realize that we have authority over our body. We have authority of what goes into our body, what we eat, what we drink, what we breathe in. We also have authority over what comes at us. For example, sickness. <coughs> that we have authority over that. That we have authority over our checkbook. That we have authority over all the circumstances that we are personally involved in. Now we don't have authority over other people unless they're your children. But your, your underage children. <laughs> you can tell me thank you later. Yeah. All right. Um, I'd like for everybody to realize that you can say to your body at the first hint of sickness, who do you think you're trying to fool? I know who I am. I'm the redeemed. And I've been redeemed from sickness. And I take authority over your sickness and you will not come into my body. I'd like for all of us to have that kind of nailed in really tight. It's a desire of mine. Now, when you have an injury, we have to take authority over our body's response to that injury. For example, both Ann and I the same year, we kind of messed up and fell down and and then we had to take authority over our body to make sure that our, our body returned to normal. <clears throat> A lot of people have worries about finances. I'll raise my hand on that. But then I realized that I have authority to speak to my checkbook. I can speak to my, my finances. Because why? Because my God's name is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, <coughs> my provider, and he's promised. That's his name, that's what he does. I wonder if that's a hint. <laughs> so the, those are just my personal desires. Anybody recognize that horn out there? There we go. It might be. I'm going to go check it. It might be. She's going to check it. If it's not, we don't know what's up. All right. Well, sometimes what we desire comes to us quickly. And other times, it's delayed. And occasionally, it never comes. But today, the focus of the sermon is what do you do when your hopes, your desires are delayed? All right, so here we have that situation with John the Baptist's parents, with Zechariah and Elizabeth. So we'll explore it. Whenever we as Christians have something that we need to wait on, a strong desire that we have, there's two elements that are present in each situation. We must wait on God to work in His way, the way He wants to do it. And then we must also wait for His perfect timing. There's one thing that I like to say a lot, and that is presentation is everything. Raise your hand if you've ever heard that. 
You've heard that before. A lot of people have. Well, there's another one that is really crucial, and that is timing is everything. Timing is everything. So let's let's just think about Zachariah and Elizabeth, because back in the days when they lived, if you didn't have children, you, you were under a curse. And that's why the scripture today was so specific about that God saw them righteous, that they followed the law. It wasn't any fault of their own, that they weren't having a child. And here Zechariah was, he was an old man. And here Elizabeth was, she was an old woman. I wonder what they called old back in those days. Well, anyway, they had to wait <coughs> until God said it was time. They had to wait so that they knew it wasn't anything that they could really lay claim to or take credit for. They knew that for Elizabeth to have a child, it would be a bona fide miracle. So, here it is. Those two concepts come into play. God chose to work the conception in his way. And number two, his timing was perfect. When you look at Luke 1, verse 75, you see that Zechariah prophesied about the coming of the Messiah and the role that John would play. This is what he said. And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High because you will prepare the way for the Lord. The reading today from Isaiah was something that John would say later. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Yes, it's something that he said. All right, so anyway, John's birth to old parents fit perfectly into God's plan for Jesus' birth and for the timing of his Coming. Now, I'm going to see how many theologians we have out there. This question is not as hard as the one in Sunday school today. All right. Can you think of another couple that was childless, who also wanted a child very, very badly? And they were good people. Emily. Yes, ma'am, that is exactly right. Raise your hand if that was on a tip of your lips. Yeah, do you know that? You know that. Abraham and Sarah. And they had to wait until all the options, and I mean all the mm -hmm. options, were exercised. They still didn't have that baby of promise, did they? But let's connect the dots in a new way. When Abraham and Sarah had that miraculous baby, it paved the way for the Jewish nation to be born. Right? Right. When, this is the new part, the new dot, when John and Elizabeth had their baby, miraculously, it paved the way not only for the Messiah, but for the new creation, the new nation, the new people of God. Had you ever thought of that before? I hadn't either. It is straight from heaven. Kind of last night, I was reading over this and I thought, wow, here we have these two miracle births. And, and I gotta tell you, the television was on. The TV was on. And I was reading this, I was looking at it, just, I had this feeling God wanted to speak to me. So I just picked it up, and I slid down off of that high chair, and I went upstairs, and I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? He said, here's another connect the dots. So amazing that here we were, Abraham and Sarah, no baby, no baby, and he's a hundred, she's ninety, and all of a sudden here they have this baby. 
total miracle. And here we have it. Zachariah and Elizabeth just in total disgrace because they don't have a baby. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, they have a baby. And it paved the way for us. So great. Since God's timing was the key in the coming of Jesus, what can we say about God's timing in our lives? It's perfect. Yeah. God could have answered Zachariah and Elizabeth's prayers for a child years before when they were still young. But then they would have taken credit for it. Who knows what they would have had? Who knows if it would have been in the right time because John the Baptist born? How many months later? Six months later? Mm -hmm. Jesus comes on the scene. Yeah. All right. So until they knew that it was totally supernatural, that they couldn't do anything about it, that it was totally out of their hands, that's when God could intervene and not before. Maybe that says something to us, too. Whenever we come to the end of our rope and we realize there's nothing left that I can do, that puts us in a perfect position for God to do something. Now comes to his Roman numeral two. You know, whenever Pastor Harold does a sermon, he, he actually does an outline. Can you imagine? That's just how his mind goes. And he's going to talk to you about somebody named Tom Petty. Have you ever heard of anybody named Tom Petty? Yes. The only Petties I know are named Lee and Richard. <laughs> They're the Petties I know. But you all know a Tom Petty? Mm -hmm. But who is that? A rock singer. All right. See, look, look how good y'all are. All right. How many of y'all knew about Tom Petty? Raise your hand. All right. Put your hand down. How many of you? This is a. This is a. Scientific survey here. How many of you knew about Lee and Richard Petty? Raise your hand. Kyle. You think it's a tie? Kyle, she Kyle said somebody. And Kyle, too. Did Kyle quit? Yeah. He quit. Quitters never win, winners never quit. He retired, there's a difference. He retired. I, well, don't go there with me. I don't believe in retiring. You just keep going and skip. Just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's a sinner too. That's right. Oh, a country singer? He sings? I did too. Wow. All right. Well, anyway, back to Tom Petty. He wrote a song entitled The Waiting, and part of it, do y'all know that song, The Waiting? Mary knows songs. She knows his songs. Anyway, what he quoted, he only quoted part of it. The waiting is the hardest part. Every day you see one more card. You take it on faith. You take it to the heart. Waiting is the hardest part. Oh, get that girl a microphone. <laughs> wow. All right. Thank you, Mary. That is awesome. Well, and then he talks about the Stanford University does this study on delayed gratification. It's been called the marshmallow study. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Yes. Wow, you people, you just know all this stuff. I never heard of this, but I, I agree with it. A child in the study was offered a choice between one small reward immediately, or if they could wait 15 minutes, they would get two rewards. And so they put one marshmallow on the table in front of the child. All right, this is, this is the result of that study. You know your tax money goes to pay for this. But they actually did find out something really great, and that is that the people, even the children, who could wait for delayed gratification were the ones who would be the most successful in life. Yep. That they could wait, yes. 
And so that was one of the things that not only had better life outcomes, but they had higher educational achievement and then more successful life. So he thinks that the authors must have read Isaiah 40, 31 from the message. But those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. <coughs> then other translations use the word trust instead of wait. Those who trust in the Lord. Those, I think it is uh, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall wait up, mount up with wings as eagles. Is that right, Laura? But does yours say trust? So I think maybe NRV does say that. So how can we wait upon God and how can we stay calm if we don't trust Him? If we trust Him, then it makes the waiting a little bit easier. Here He has some benefits from waiting, and that would be, Marty, when you were waiting to marry Stephanie, all that time, it paid off. You could have taken one of those other girls, but no, you waited for just the right girl at a great stone. Is that right? right? How about you, Phil? Do you have to wait to find your perfect Cinderella? Yes. And she waited for her Prince Charming. All right, so here we go. Psalm 40 which I think Debbie read for us today. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. So here are the benefits that David received as he waited for the Lord. And I guarantee he will do the same for you. <clears throat> Number one, God lifted him out of his despair. He changed his circumstances. Number two, God set his feet on solid ground and gave him a purpose and a direction for his life. Number three, God kept him steady as he walked along that path. He kept David on the path that God had planned for his life. And number four, you'll really love this. Some of you will love it more than others. God put a new song in my heart. Yes, a praise song. He changed his outlook on life. So the question for us is, why must we pray and ask God to help us to be satisfied while we wait? on his perfect time. And now, I am going to tell you this. This is a disclaimer I'm reading straight from here. It is none of that sassiness out of Florida. All right? Number one, God is the author of time. He doesn't live in time. He lives in eternity. But he made time for us. Number two, God makes no mistakes. And here it is, number three. Do you think there is a chance that God might be a little smarter than you are? <laughs> Can you believe that came out of an Alabama boy? He's been hanging around with somebody too long. Well, here are some verses that will help us to wait. Let's, why don't we go into our Bible because I changed all his verses. He's got his verses written down here. I thought, oh, I'm, those are not the ones. All right, so he, he kind of was worried about these and told them, sit down, you know. So here we go. If you don't mind looking in your Bible, it is <coughs> Psalm 37. When you got it, say got it. Got it. All right, let's look at verse 4 and 5. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will do this. How about that? Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. What the psalmist doesn't say or the translator doesn't say here is that when it says the desires of your heart, it means those desires that are so deep that you don't even know you have them. The desires that go so deep within you. Trust in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Delight in Him. Commit your way to Him and trust in Him and He'll bring it to pass. Then I don't even think you need to look it up in your Bible. I think you probably have this one by heart. It would be Jeremiah 29 11. While we're waiting on God, while we're waiting for those things that we desire so greatly in our lives, this is one we need to remember. When you've got it, say, got it. If you don't need it, say, I don't need it. All right. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's a good verse to remember whenever you are right at the end and you're thinking, God, I've got to have your help. God, are you going to come through for me? God, is this going to work this time? Yes. Remember that verse. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will bring it to pass. He'll give you the desires of your heart. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans that are good, not bad. Plans for a future, a glorious future. Plans for a hope, hope and faith to bring it to pass. And then Hebrews 12, <coughs> 1 and 2. Hebrews 12. Right after the T's. Hebrews 12. <coughs> Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, injecting something here, a great cloud of witnesses who have proved God to be true. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our, perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him. Consider him. Ecclesiastes 3, 1. You don't need to look this up. For everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. You know that? A time. Mm -hmm. The secret peace, the secret to peace with yourself is to discover and accept and appreciate God's perfect timing. To doubt and resist God's timing leads to disaster. It leads to despair. It leads to rebellion. And sometimes moving ahead of God's perfect timing and His plan for our lives. Turns out that we do our own thing and we miss out on our destiny. Timing is everything. And then he has one final piece of advice. Begin each day with this thought. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. That's a wonderful thing to think about when you get up. Let me hear of your goodness to me this day, dear Lord. Here's the way I try to start the day. I always start out the Stephanie way. Thank you, Lord, for a new day to live. Thank you. I praise you, Lord, for a great new day. 
then I make sure that I do this. Lord, and I present my body to you as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. But you can do with my body whatever you want to do. I want it to be holy. I want me to be holy. I want to be acceptable to you. And I want to thank you for your grace that surrounds me every day like a shield. That you protect me. And I want to thank you, Lord, that your way is perfect and it delights my soul. What would be a way that you could start your day? Even though you're waiting on something, a very deep desire in your heart, what would be a way? Would there be a verse of scripture you could say? What about it, Ann? What do you think? You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer while you're waiting to see that healing manifest. Awesome. Let me see. Do I have another victim out there? A volunteer would do it. Beth, what about you? While you're waiting on the desires of your heart, what, what could you do? She had the right words to say to him, to let him know there is a future and there is a hope. So today, as we pray, let's ask the Lord to give us a verse, a verse for our life that we can grab a hold on and we can say it to ourselves as we wait, knowing that he does fulfill all the desires of our heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you show us in the scripture how, how these desires for a child were answered by you miraculously in your perfect timing. Thank you, Lord, that you show us day by day that you are a faithful God and that we can trust you. Right now we ask you, Heavenly Father, to fill our hearts with your word that we can encourage ourselves every day to stand firm and to believe you that as we delight in you, that you will give us the desires of our heart. We thank you for it. We believe you for it, we praise you for it, and we receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn of commitment today is O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 178. Amen.
Did you say Butler? Cutler. Cutler. Okay. Thank you. Larry Cutler. Healing. Okay. Have they gone or they're leaving tomorrow? Okay. Laura's parents. Mine continue to pray for me. I've got a, I've got a praise report. I had a really great week. I've been in my house at 2025 Garrett Hill Road for four days, going on the fifth night tonight. Um, so, yes, and I'd like to just say how wonderful it is to see Christ reflected in other humans, because that is the best way, I think, to bring people to the Lord. So thank you all for being such a shining example. And I'd like to thank Marcy for personally coming and helping me clean my house this week. So I have a word of praise for that. And thank you all for keeping me in your prayers because it, it really works. Um, Emma's little brother, he's almost a year old, um, fell and broke his collarbone. Aww. And she would like you to keep him in prayer. As What's well. his name? Mason. Mason. I want to give a disclaimer on that cleaning in the house. <laughs> Don't come to my house. <laughs> no, Whitney's been there. She knows. Mm -hmm. Well, I told mom, I said, I don't remember cleaning anything. I think I just mostly like showed her all my clothes that I was going to wear to church, but somehow or another it, it got cool. clean. So. <laughs> it was pretty cool. She's, she did a lot of work too. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you and we worship you that you are a good God. You are a good, good Father. And that you love us, that we are loved by you. We thank you. We give you praise. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the bright and morning star. You are the man who have God with us. You are the desire of nations. We worship you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your action and your leading your people here this week. Thank you, Lord, for your protection over us day by day. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you that when we're at our worst, that you are at your best. We thank you, Lord, that you pick us up and you help us. No matter what the problem is, that you are always for us. You are not against us. That we can count on you when we can't count on anyone else. We thank you, Lord, and we love you with all our hearts. And so, Father, as you instruct us in the letter to the Hebrews to bring all, of our, bring all of our concerns and our cares to you, Lord, we come to your throne boldly, knowing that you will answer our prayers, knowing that the answer in Christ is always yea and amen. Thank you, Lord. We know that you hear our prayers and that when you hear them, you will answer them and give us our heart's desires. Thank you for it, Lord. Now we want to lift up our special request to you. 
We ask you, Lord, for Amy Calkin to be strengthened, Lord, and to be totally and completely healed. And we thank you for it. We lift up our bitterness to you, Lord, and our grudges that we have held. And we lift up our, our faults and our shortcomings, Lord, to you now, even as we know that you have forgiven us, but we want to take this moment to let everything go as we are before your throne, to let it all go. That we may have room inside our hearts for your love, that we can then display to others. Father, we pray for Harold today that he will be healed completely and strengthened. We pray for the Goins family as they travel, that you will keep them safe and that you will keep them bound together in love. Pray also for Laura's parents, Gary and Pam, as they fly to Texas. We pray, Lord, for safe travel for them. And we pray also for a good report. And we thank you for it. We thank you for total and complete healing for Gary. Total and complete. As Laura puts it, nothing else will do. We thank you for it. We pray, Heavenly Father, for <coughs> Petey Collins as he has surgery on Tuesday. We pray that you will keep him safe as he goes through the surgery and that you will heal him completely and restore his energy and strength. We pray for Elaine Snyder as she has back surgery. We pray that it will be a success, Lord, and that she will also be restored to a pain-free life and be flexible and able to do whatever she needs to do. We thank you, Lord, for bringing Robin Brown through her surgery, and we pray that you will heal her totally and completely. Give her a heart like a brand new, brand new person. A brand new heart. We thank you for it. Lord, we pray for Larry <coughs> that the healing that he needs, that he will be open to it, that he will have faith in you, that he will realize that Jesus paid for us to be healed, that he will go ahead and take it and he will tell his body, body, by his stripes you were healed. So line up with the Word of God. We pray for total and complete healing for him, for Sheila's dad, Larry. We pray also for Mason, Lord, for his collarbone to heal and to be strong, good as new. We pray, Lord, for Mary continually to set her on her feet, Lord, to raise her up, to give her direction for her life, for her to know exactly where it is that you want her to go, where it is that you want her to serve you, and what it is that you want her to be. We pray for her destiny to be revealed to her, and that she will follow. We know that she will. And Heavenly Father, we pray especially for little Elijah Brawls, we pray, Heavenly Father, for him to be totally healed of this pneumonia, that he will be totally healed from the surgeries that he has had to endure, and that you will return him to his family totally healed and good as new. Good as new. And we thank you for it, Lord. We ask your blessing upon Michael and Karen as they wait on him. Father, we also pray for the John Burroughs family that you will comfort them in their loss, that you will help all who are dealing with loss now, that you will comfort them for Ted and Vivian, for their family, Lord, as they have had to go through so many losses this year. We give you praise for it. We thank you that you are the friend that sticks closer to us than a brother. We thank you, Lord, and we praise your name this day. We thank you once again, Jesus, for coming. And we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
be honor and strength, glory, <coughs> dominion, and power through the church in Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.